Greetings, fine people. My name is Leonard, and I am a junk crafter. The junk that I use in my videos, that I swear comes from totally legitimate local sources, I usually find out in the field, but sometimes they are found closer to home. Case in point, my toaster. Recently, it stopped working, and I found this odd since toasters tend to last for decades. I resolved to fix this problem, and was horrified to discover... Circuit boards! Since there is nothing I can do to save it, I decided to make a project from it. I asked for ideas, and my daughter suggested making it into a bread box. Perfect! It has just the right combination of utility, impracticality, and irony. Before I crack this thing open, I'd like to answer that burning question you have seared into your brain right now. What? is a toaster. A toaster is an appliance that uses a heating element to induce the Maillard reaction in a piece of bread or pastry. The first toaster was a flat rock placed beside an open flame. After the discovery of iron, metal frames were used to hold the bread near the fire. Temperature control was difficult using this method, so in 1909, the heating element was invented to make toasting easier. Ten years later, some genius decided to cover the bare electrical coils with metal to make it safer. Rapid technological progress followed, and features such as automatic pop-up and dual-side toasting were added. Decades later, we're still making toast the same way as our great-great-grandparents. Unless your toaster breaks, because life is unfair. What an exhaustive study of the history of toasters. My compliments to the researcher who dedicated so much time and effort to producing this segment. Now we're ready to open this thing up and see what's what. First, we remove the screws from the base. The base slides out with the guts of the toaster attached. To get them free of the shell, the toast levers come off. The only remaining connections are two small plugs that send data from the dials to the control boards. Now the shell is free, and I seem to have discovered some ancient bagel bits. They are surprisingly not very toasted. I'm still not entirely clear how this thing actually works. Toasters have always been very mysterious. If you want to know more than you ever knew you wanted to know about them, check out the video from Technology Connections. Their videos are great, and they do a much better job explaining than I do. What I do see are several pieces of hard steel and springs. I love springs. I have a box full of them, even though I rarely use them for anything. For right now, we'll set the base aside and focus on the shell. I think I can use these dials as part of the mechanism that opens the bread box. Hey! The sides are attached with screws! That means I can get it apart without a saw. I'm hoping the drill will fit in there, so I don't have to remove ten microscopic screws by hand. No, that would only work if life was fair. I've already established, due to the broken toaster, that this is not the case. The screws are really tight. I can barely get them to turn without the screwdriver slipping. It's very hard to get in there and turn it while applying enough force to actually get the screw to turn. I can already feel my hands cramping. For any masochists out there, I filmed the entire horrible 27 minutes, 
and played it back here in high speed so you can enjoy it as much as I did. It would have been much easier to just cut the screws, but I thought that I might need them for some part of the build. It turns out I was right, but it doesn't make me feel any better about it. Okay, calming down. Getting the toaster apart now just involves removing the dial housings. A few screws, and it's off. Looking at the dial up close, I can definitely see how it can work as a way to move a lever, which can engage the release mechanism. Now to get this last screw out. It just doesn't want to move. And even if it did, the head is totally stripped. Maybe I can saw it off. Maybe not. Wait, if I can get to just the screw by bending the metal out of the way. No, it's not working. Could be because this coping saw is completely devoid of teeth. Hacksaw it is, then. With my luck, the blade will snap and the screw will still be attached. I cut most of the way through. Time to use brute force. Bye-bye, little screw. No one will miss you. So, the base. It's weird. The connection between the toaster and the base has little tabs that are turned sideways. To get it off, you have to turn the tabs and force them out the hole. It's slightly more annoying than screws. Maybe not the screws from the shell, though. Once it was freed from the tabby things, I needed to remove all the wiring from the base. Before I do that, it might be fun to take apart the toast lowering mechanism. Hey, a big spring and a little spring. It's like Christmas. Okay, the wires. More screws, but at least these aren't the little evil screws of pain. I was going to be nice and remove the wire connections, but at this point, the thing is lucky I'm not using it for target practice. I'm cutting anything that doesn't come off easily. Now we can see what's left under here. I'm surprised by the amount of wiring and circuits. Didn't toasters used to be purely mechanical? Ooh, an electromagnet. Save that for later. Finally, it's off. I've been told to never stick my hand in a toaster. Well, now is my chance. It wasn't as exciting as I hoped. We're going to need the base to be flat, and since we don't need the little connection parts, off they go. I want to smooth out these rough spots. I'll start with some 150 grit sandpaper. Wait, why am I using sandpaper? That's much better. And we're done. Nice and smooth. I made a little sketch of the doohickey that will open the lid and keep it closed. When you turn the dial, it will push this lever, which will pull the catch, and then it opens. Releasing the dial will allow the lever to return to its original setting with one of the springs I salvaged. Easy! What could possibly go wrong? Let's get some materials. Base plate, springs, levers, catch. This is an aluminum bar from something. I can't remember where I got it. I actually don't need this brass thing. This is the insert from a windshield wiper. It's useful for a lot of things, including as a torsion bar, which is like a flat spring. Hacksaw blades are great steel. They're strong and rigid without being brittle. Very good for making small tools like lockpicks. Not that I would know anything about that. 
Rather than take a bunch of measurements, I'm going to use the shell as a guide for figuring out where everything needs to be. I like arbitrary measurements using things I have lying around. The numbers aren't important as long as things line up and it's even. There we go. The one-to-one -one scale drawing is done. Except when we need to make a revision. I realized that using two springs with two anchor points was a waste of time and junk. Instead, just connecting the tops of the levers will yield the same result. Thanks to the magic of video, the latch mechanism is done. It has nothing to do with the obscene amount of trial and error needed to get it to work. I just didn't want to bore you with the details. It will be attached to the inside of the front with epoxy later. I'll probably forget to record that too. Now it's time to do the thing I've been most nervous about. Cutting the top of the shell. To prevent crushing it in the vise, I'll use this perfectly ordinary sock that doesn't have blood on it as padding. Despite the secure hold, the part I need to cut keeps moving around. Bracing it doesn't help. Wait, of course. Inner tube. And we're not cutting. It's plugged in. The extension cord is lying on the ground. Well, there's your problem. Okay, now we can cut. It's scary. As if this gets messed up, I don't have another toaster to take apart. Unless our new toaster has an unfortunate accident. You should see what happened to our blender during our first move. It wasn't pretty. I'll trim the area around the dials to allow the top to swing clear when it opens. Some quick cleanup here with the rotary tool. See the smoke coming out of the end of the tool? That's not normal. I tried to use a skewer to hold the chuck stationary, and some of it broke off and must have caught fire. So yeah, I'll be finishing the rest with a file now. That's all the major components. I'll take this mess inside and assemble it. This will take a while. You've got time to make a sandwich or something. The assembly is complete. I am proud to present the toaster bread box. Ooh. Ah. While you were out, I used epoxy to attach some sheet metal to the inside bottom and back. The sides have thin plastic sheets, and the top has a clear polycarbonate sheet that totally didn't come from a picture frame. I ended up using a few of the screws of death to hold the back and sides together. There was much cursing and lamentation during the process. I'm pretty happy with the dials. I used the leftover aluminum bar pieces as levers. A bolt connects them to the dials with some nuts to keep it from moving. At the bottom is one of the smaller springs, which is acting as a return mechanism, so the dial goes back to the stop when it is released. To stop the rotation, I just added a screw where I wanted the dial to return. Now that it's done, I'm not sure what to do with it. Nobody in their right mind would put food in there. I can always use more storage in the workshop, though. Mr. Fine is displaying the final product. For such a simple idea, it turned into a fairly complex build. And by complex, I mean totally aggravating. Even though it was stressful and sometimes painful, there is a little kernel of good that came out of this. In the end, I can look back at the entire experience and say, I'm done with that. Moving on. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please click the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, please click the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing.
let me know what kind of projects you think I should work on. Until next time, stay crafty.